Hello everyone, I'm Heather Landex, the Food Inclusivity Mentor, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about food allergies as one of the most dangerous and widespread dietary preference categories. And the reason it's so important is also because it's highly legislated. So if you're a food business or you're providing food within any sort of business, you're highly liable should someone have an allergic reaction. But I just want to explain the general term food allergy or the word allergy actually means any adverse reaction, any bad reaction to something that's normally deemed harmless. Uh, if I have a reaction on my skin, that's still an allergy. If I have hay fever and have rhinitis, an itchy inside of the nose and the face, that's still an allergy. But when we're talking about food allergies, we can still be talking about these other aspects of allergy just involved in a food item, such as milk, which is the most common, most deadly food allergy. We're not, not a lot of people know that. And the reason I know that is because in 2019, I thought I had a severe cow's milk allergy. And it's quite terrifying because milk isn't everything. But in the EU, there's 14 legally legislated common food allergies. However, people can be allergic to anything, including food and other things, such as insects that might accidentally get in food. I'm allergic to insects too. Food authorities and allergists and medical professionals are trying to separate severe food allergies from other types of food allergy. So when they're talking about the extreme type of food allergy that can kill you in 20 minutes if you eat, accidentally eat the thing you're allergic to, which is called an allergen. So say someone eats some milk and they have a severe milk allergy. That causes something called an IgE response, a immunoglobin E response in the body. And that can make everything swell up. They go into anaphylactic shock, which basically can kill you you can go into cardiac arrest, you can have brain damage. All of these things are extremely scary, but food allergies are extremely common. So that's why I want to go into it in a lot of detail today. There's going to have to be a part one and a part two. So today we're going to talk about what's the food allergy, what type of food allergies do people have, the overlap with intolerances, other types of food allergy that are not this anaphylactic scary one, other types of immune response that are not food allergies, although it's very hard to define them. So when we're talking about hypersensitivity, that means anaphylactic shock could be dead in 20 minutes if they eat the thing they're allergic to. Then we go on to food sensitivities, which could be anything from intolerances, some of the things that go on in the gut, some of the things that go on on the skin, and sometimes food allergies are airborne. But even things like IBS might be caused by an allergic reaction. However, it can also be a mild food allergy, or it can be some other kind of allergy. So there's a lot of allergic reactions that cause irritation on the skin, such as the cause of eczema, not the only cause of eczema, but one of the causes of eczema. Um, asthma, so deaths in the media have been caused by actually, they're not sure if it was a food allergy and anaphylactic shock or whether they died of asthma because the airways swell up. Something I've had problems with following 2019, a severe reaction, is hives. But once you've had a reaction, your body is inflamed with all of the immune components that can cause another reaction. So for, for about a year after this severe reaction, I kept having reactions because the body's already got all of the inflammation that's ready to cause another allergy. But some symptoms can also be gastro and take place in the gut. There's a food allergy called f pies, which can take quite a lot of hours or longer to cause problems in the gut, which causes inflammation in the gut. And it does involve the immune system, but not this IgE type of response. But if you think about the gut, the stomach, the intestine, all of that is still a skin surface. So allergies can occur through the airways, in the gastro area, on the skin. So the scary part of food allergies is airborne contamination. So if someone has a peanut allergy, peanuts can be dusty, especially dry roasted. People associate peanut allergy with aeroplanes. You're supposed to not open nuts on an aeroplane, which can be quite inconvenient for other people, but it might not kill someone. But one of the lesser known in the general population food allergies is sulfur products, sulfur dioxide. And that can also have wide ranging symptoms. Some of them are like asthma. Some of them are like itching in different ways to what you would expect. So when we're talking about food allergies in terms of legislation and food businesses, we're talking about the 14s listed in the EU. In the US, it might be nine but they're actually slightly different terminology. Shellfish is another well-known food allergy. A lot of people are understand that people can have a shellfish allergy. However, in the EU, it's broken down into crustacean and mollusks. Now you ever think about 
where that might lie for octopus or squid. Where in the shellfish does octopus and squid lie? Hmm. But in other countries it's just called shellfish or it's broken down differently. Same for nuts. It might be ground nuts and tree nuts. Even coconuts might appear, but that's not in the EU rules. Because I'm a UK environmental health practitioner, I usually talk about 14 common legislated food allergies in terms of British law, but it's very similar for the rest of Europe. There's other ones in Australia and Canada, a different number in Canada, similar in Australia, but they might be broken down slightly differently. Generally, peanuts is separate from the rest of the nuts. There are nuts that are not technically nuts, um, but they might be categorised in there or might be left out, such as almonds, cashews. They might technically not be nuts. I'm going to break down each of the allergens separately in shorter videos and usually where there's more overlap like I might do peanuts and nuts together I might do all the shellfish together um, so then it becomes less than 14 videos so there's all these things surrounding food allergies that there's general misconceptions in the population also within food businesses as particularly servers might not understand the process in the kitchen people with food allergies might not understand the risk from contamination in the kitchen or from the manufacturers, or from the whole food chain, or from other customers, such as on a buffet. But also we want to talk about legal liability, because that is sort of the problem. Restaurant businesses are trying to disclaim the risk of people with food allergies because it's so common. 20% of people report in the UK uh, that they have a food sensitivity, and that includes all people, from the mild end all the way up to the uh, anaphylactic, going to shock kind of scare, the scariest type of food allergy. People think that you can treat, for example, a peanut allergy by eating peanuts. That's not true. There are supervised ways of increasing tolerance and trying to stop the severe type of anaphylaxis with microdosing of peanuts. But the same for me. I have a grass allergy. I could take medication that basically conditions my immune system so that I stop reacting to pollen. However, it's a very severe process. It takes several years. It might not last forever. So I've chosen not to do it because I can't risk the side effects for three years. Um, so the symptoms can be managed. I can take antihistamines, but basically I avoid foods that I'm allergic to. I can't really avoid grass pollen, but in those times of year, I have other strategies in the home that I use to try to avoid pollen being on my clothes and on my bed and things like that. And I'm allergic to insects. So I do lots of things to repel insects <laughs> and clean my, sh my bedding and all those things lots a lot more, but I can't avoid insects in food. Even flour has some insects ground up in it. Even as a vegan, I can't avoid insects. It's not just kids that are effective. You can grow into a food allergy, especially in the elder populations might have a less responsive immune system or slightly out of whack immune system. So things like fish allergy are more common in older populations. Uh, things like, uh, for example, I had my spontaneous severe allergy. I hadn't had severe allergies until I was 35. And it might be something to do with hormones. It might be something to do with stress. It might be done something to do with having children. Who knows? They don't know why I suddenly had a, f a food allergy in the middle of my 30s. So don't assume that children grow out of food allergies. They can get worse. A lot of people might get a worse reaction every time they're exposed. So uh, basically the general rule of thumb, <laughs> if someone tells you they have an allergy, take it to be the scary anaphylactic kind, because some people with a Milder allergy might develop a more severe allergy next time. It can also trigger asthma. It can also trigger a lot of gastro or other issues, rashes, hives, that are very uncomfortable for people. So even if they have a mild allergy and it's not going to kill them, you still have to take it seriously by eliminating that in their food. But people with food allergies are not only triggered by eating it, they can be triggered by it being in the air, on the skin. But the reason legislation is so important, especially in the UK, Although in, in the US it's also increasing in complexity. They've added sesame to the list of common food allergies. It's already in the EU and the UK. They've, the, in the UK they've also had Natasha's law following the death of um, Natasha on an aeroplane and she'd eaten a sandwich and the labelling was confusing. Then there's potentially Owen's law coming up which is about menu item. The description didn't say what was in it and the staff in the restaurant misinformed him. So that's another risk area. So can we stop making laws based on someone, some young person that's died? In the US, there's Elijah's law. It was, it was created because Elijah died after eating a cheese sandwich, even though he had a known milk allergy in childcare. It's extremely sad. The number of people with food allergies 
is going up and they don't know the cause of food allergies. You're not supposed to be born with a food allergy. Maybe it's our stressful lifestyles. Maybe it's in indoors environments. We have sealed housing these days, central heating, molds and other pollutants in the air. Air pollution might have a death toll associated with it. Or it could be something we're doing with our food. There's a hypothesis about hygiene. There's a hypothesis about toxins. Too many toxins in food. Too much hygiene in food. We're disinfecting our biome in our gut. We're using antibiotics too much. But we don't know. If bear all that in mind, when anyone tells you they have a food allergy, always assume it's serious. So I hope that blast of information didn't overwhelm anyone. I hope it made you basically see how complicated food allergies can be and how common they are. But people can be allergic to anything. It might not be ingested, it can be through the airways. So it's very important to understand allergies just so you never hurt anyone else. I was never taught about food allergies until I had my own food allergy. I was a food safety auditor and even I didn't know the ins and outs of how difficult it is to eat out. So if you look at a menu, you might not be able to tell what's in the food. If you look at an allergy matrix, which is like a list of all of the allergens in all of the menu items, it might not tell you about the risk of contamination. Food inclusivity is profitable for places like restaurants and hotels, hospitality, any food business. And understanding your customers is a very good, big, important part of business. The concept of food inclusivity can be applied universally, even if the number of allergens or the names of allergens varies country to country. So I'm Heather Landex. Welcome to my channel on food inclusivity. Do ask questions, comment, share, and all of these things. This is an educational channel. Um, it's best to spread it around the world. So in part two, we're going to talk about ingredients versus contamination.